What's up guys, it's Austin with Pickleball Playbook and today we're gonna to be talking about how to counter attack on that backhand side. Be sure to stick around to the end because I'm gonna be covering three common mistakes that I see all the time that will make or break your counter. So the first thing that you need in order to hit an awesome backhand counter is the correct grip. Because you don't want your grip too far this way to where it's just favoring your backhand and not your forehand. And you also don't want it too far this way to where you're doing something along these lines because that's not gonna favor your backhand and you'll have a great forehand. So you want something in between. And the grip that I like to use is in between Eastern and Continental. So what we're gonna do to find that grip is turn our paddle on its edge like this. And we're gonna come down this outside edge and then down this bevel here. And as you can see, it makes an eight-sided octagon shape. This is bevel number one, this is bevel number two, and this is bevel number three. We're gonna put our index knuckle, the inside right here, as well as the bottom of our palm on in between bevel number two and bevel number three. So if we count together, we have one, two, three. Right here it makes a point and it's kind of like an arrow shooting out that way. Along that point is where I wanna put that index knuckle and the bottom of my palm. And what that will look like from this angle is like this because it's gonna favor my forehand side and my backhand side equally. What it looks like from this side so that you guys can see is just like this. If I just hold my paddle totally normal, it's just gonna have that outside edge facing towards my opponents, which is essentially what we want. That way they don't just target our forehand and we're sitting backhand like this, trying to counter punch those volleys. And then when we try to hit a forehand, it looks like this. So now that we have the correct grip, we need to make sure that we're in the correct ready position because we wanna be ready for that ball to come no matter what height it comes at. Obviously the lower that the ball comes, the more difficult it's gonna be for us to counter the ball. So in order for us to combat that, what we wanna do is have a wide ready position. So we wanna get our legs out wide. And who I like to think about in the pros is AJ Kohler. He has a really wide ready position and he walks around like this. That's why his, his nickname is the crab is because he has a really wide ready position because he gets extremely low and he has one of the best backhand counters in the game because of it. Because if they hit that ball low, I can now get low if my legs are spread apart. Whereas if my legs are close in here and I'm standing straight up, it's a whole lot harder to get low and stay balanced at the same time. And as you can tell, this just all around looks weird. So you wanna make sure that you have this wide ready position, shoulders outside, I mean your legs outside your shoulders, that's gonna allow you to be able to get more power on your counters. And then the next thing with that is making sure that our paddle is out in front of us. We don't want it straight out in front of us like this because this is gonna expend energy. We want it here somewhere comfortable. We also don't want it in here because if it's in here, we're gonna have to push out to the ball. We wanna be slightly out so that we can just simply turn our wrist and counter that ball back. The next thing that you wanna do is face towards wherever you wanna counter the ball to. So if I wanna counter my ball cross court over here, I'm going to face towards cross court with my body. Okay, so I'm facing this way and that's gonna allow me to counter there. And then the second aspect of this is we want our paddle to face directly out in front of wherever we're facing. So the way that we do that is we're just gonna simply bring our paddle as soon as they speed up the ball to our belly button area. So now that it's at my belly button area and let's say the, the ball comes up higher, then I'm gonna bring that paddle to my chest area. If it comes to my face, it's probably going out. So in that situation, I'm just gonna step out of the way and watch it go out. But essentially all I'm doing is I'm using my body as that angle so that I can get my paddle face towards where it needs to go. Because ultimately the ball is going to go wherever I'm facing. So if I'm gonna counter this ball back cross court, I'm gonna face cross court as I counter. And all that I'm doing is simply sliding my foot backwards as I'm doing that. And then I'm countering that ball back that way. If I wanna counter at the person directly in front of me, I'm just gonna hold my stance, hold my ready position bring that paddle into my belly button so that I know I have the correct angle and then I'm punching outwards.
The sponsor of this video is Selkirk. I've been using this Pro S1 Pickleball for the last few months now, and it still hasn't cracked. I'm yet to crack one. I've heard of people that have cracked these, but they're extremely hard to crack. I don't know the exact technology behind them, but it makes it super nice that you can rely on a ball for such a long period of time. And what else is great is they actually have a one year warranty. So if you buy a pack of 12 and you break four of those 12 balls within a year, you can send that pack back and they'll replace it. No questions asked. So if you wanna pick up some of these, if you're in need of any balls, I would strongly suggest getting these ones. You can use my code ADV-Playbook and you'll receive a free e-gift card after your purchase. Now back to the video. So now that we have all of that down, something that a lot of people struggle with is deciding whether or not to counter with a backhand or with a forehand. Since this video is all about backhands, I'm gonna be teaching you guys specifically the backhand counter. But an easy way to know is if your backhand is closer to the center line, you're gonna be countering with your backhand side. If your forehand is closer to the center line, you're gonna be countering with your forehand. So since I'm on the right side and I'm a righty player, the center line is closer to my backhand. So simply all I'm going to do is something called shifting, where I'm going to move all of my weight towards the sideline and hold that backhand side since I'm on the right side. My backhand's closer to that center line. So shifting is just simply pushing off of my non-dominant foot in this situation where I'm hitting a backhand and pulling out towards the side as I make contact with the ball. That's gonna make it so that when they speed it up and let's say it comes to my forehand side, but I'm on this right side and I should be countering with the backhand, I'm simply shifting and then I'm getting that ball to stay out in front of where I'm at so that I can counter it comfortably rather than them hitting it here and me having to counter it like this. This is gonna be an awkward position and I'm gonna pop the ball up. So we need to make sure that we're shifting so we're anticipating where that ball is going to be. They speed it up and then I'm shifting towards the sideline. Okay, the next thing to talk about is the actual motion that we need to make with our arm. And this is what a ton of people get wrong. What we wanna focus on with this motion is we're starting at that belly button height opportunely. If they have a good speed up, it's gonna come around this area. And then we're finishing up at our shoulder and then our paddle face is going to finish by facing upwards towards the sky. So almost like we're gonna take a selfie, here is how we wanna finish with our paddle face. We're taking that selfie as we come through the ball. So I'm here, and then I finish with that selfie motion. So I'm sliding to the side, let's say they hit my right hip. I'm sliding to the side and I finish right here. And remember, wherever I'm facing is where that ball is gonna go. So if I slide and I move this foot out, my back foot, it's gonna go wide. So I need to make sure that it, as I slide, I'm staying facing towards my target, and then I finish in that selfie position. Starting here, that paddle angle, I'm coming up to my stomach, and then I'm finishing in that selfie position. My paddle is slightly up towards the sky, and it's also like I'm taking, almost like I'm taking that sideways selfie as I come through the ball. Okay, now it's time to talk about the most important part about this video, and that is three common mistakes that will make or break your counter. So the first and most common thing that I see is people will utilize too much elbow. You actually wanna keep your elbow in generally the same exact spot throughout that entire counter motion. We don't wanna be pushing out with the elbow. We don't want it to come up and then down as we hit through the shot. This is adding unnecessary movement that we do not need. It's gonna cause you to be very inaccurate in your counters. So you wanna keep that elbow generally in the same spot throughout the shot. So as you can see, it's staying there as I finish in that selfie position. My elbow is staying in that same spot. The second mistake and something that's very common I see all the time is players motion will go from dominant side to non-dominant side as they hit through the ball. So you're gonna lose a ton of spin by doing this and also a ton of power because finishing with your paddle face facing upward is gonna help you to come over the ball because that's gonna close your paddle face. Whereas if you finish here, your paddle face is gonna be closed downwards. You're probably gonna pop the ball up and you're not gonna have any countering power or spin. So don't do this, instead we're coming from here, almost as if we're pulling a sword out of our sheath right here, and we're finishing up here in that selfie position.
Okay, the third really common mistake that I see all the time is that players will actually take a step back as they're countering the ball because their opponents will catch them off guard and it's a scary shot. And so it'll automatically cause them to take a step back and they'll jump as they're hitting through the shot. So it's not the worst thing because you're actually putting your hip towards where you want to go, which is going to better allow you, especially on that backhand side, to go back at your opponent. But what it's doing is it's opening your paddle face as you lean backwards. So that's the problem with it. And what I'm not saying is that you shouldn't ever take a step backwards. You should absolutely take a step backwards if you anticipate that they're going to speed up the ball because then you have more reaction time. But it's when you need to take that step backwards that's most important. So probably the most important thing to note is that if you don't catch the ball out in front of you, your paddle face is going to be open. So you want to make sure that you're getting it far enough out in front of you, which can be super challenging, especially when people are hitting fast speed ups. This is where it comes down to anticipation and taking that initial step back so that you have more space in between you and the person speeding up the ball. And that's prior to them hitting the ball. So you anticipate that they're going to speed up the ball. We take a step backwards. We split step. We're facing towards our opponents. We bring that paddle in towards our belly button and then we finish in that selfie position and we're leaning forward through the shot. As we lean forward, that paddle face will go down. So in a situation where you don't anticipate that they're speeding up the ball, you just have to hold your ground. That's gonna be the most important thing. And I don't mean by that that you're not gonna to shift towards the side, but what I mean is that you don't wanna be leaning back as you're making contact with the ball. Something I would be very interested in finding out if you guys will leave a comment below is what side you guys prefer countering the ball on. Do you prefer countering it on your backhand side? Does that feel more comfortable to you? Or do you prefer countering it on your forehand side? I myself, I prefer a forehand counter just because that's my stronger side, but it can get really tricky when the counter comes over here. Obviously I'm gonna be countering with the backhand. I like both, but definitely favor that forehand side. So let me know in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.